Hey team, healthy. Good to see you guys here today. Uh, as, as usual, I'm watching the live feed as, you, as you're jumping on here. Uh, I know this, we have some new names here. So if you're new to the live feed, then I'm so pleased to have you. Now, most of the people who watch these question and answer times, the midweek with Dr. C, will watch it on tape delay because of time zones and all of that. Uh, but if you're live, uh, just know that you can go ahead and put your questions in. And what I'll do is I pick up questions uh, today or uh, in the days ahead, and then I'll answer them in next week's session. And so what we're having uh, today is questions that have come in through the past week. And then uh, if you're not live you, and if you're watching this on tape, you can put it in the comment section. By the way, I think it was Aaron, it was you that was saying that you don't see the comment section. The comment section comes after we have finished going live and then uh, you'll, you'll have it there. So that's why you didn't see the comment section there. So I uh, just know that everything we're doing here today is, is generated by you. Uh, I love being on Team Healthy with you. Uh, one of the things that I do want to ask is uh, that we just uh, not keep it snarky or not uh, not make it snarky on here uh, on the, the, the chat video. Uh, every now and then somebody comes in with some snarky words, but uh, the vast majority, of course, is highly supportive and encouraging and all the rest. And that's what we do here. So we're going to be talking today. I, I picked up on a theme of many of the questions that have come in. And, and the question that I'm wanting us to zero in on and that you are asking about is, are narcissists all about the show? Now, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and give you the short answer. Yes, and uh, they are. Narcissists are posers. And so many of the questions that you ask reflect your uh, struggles to try to come to terms with what that means. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a foreshadowing that tomorrow, the upload that I have on the video section is... Uh, I think it's called the number one problem that will get you in trouble with a narcissist. Okay, you ready for it? I'm not going to make you wait till tomorrow. The number one problem is you tell them the truth about who they are. And that'll get you in trouble every time. Whenever you attempt to have engagements with a narcissist, um, obviously, there's going to be some built-in strain and tension from the very get-go because narcissists are not known for wanting to be open and honest and vulnerable. Instead, they're constantly angling, trying to figure out what kind of posturing they can have over you. And it sets up all sorts of you know, inappropriate kind of patterns. Now, uh, I was noticing on the, uh, the live feed here, that one of you put in a question. I'm going to go ahead and start with this one. And then we're going to go in with the one with some of the ones that came in through the week. Uh, one of you put in there, what if the narcissist shows uh, that they want to show how insignificant you are to them? Is that fake? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. Per first of all, when a narcissist wants to let you know that you're an inadequate person, that you're an insignificant person, it's pure gaslighting. What they're doing is they're attempting to build themselves up at your expense. And when you, be, uh, when you stop and think about it, it's pretty pitiable that someone has decided, well, my strategy for having self-esteem such as it is, is to diminish you. And so when they say, yeah, you're an insignificant person, as far as I'm concerned, you're a loser, you're no good, you don't matter. And, and they go into all of this diminishing of you. It's like, why is that so important that you have to belittle other individuals in order to elevate yourself? What's the gain? And in the narcissist's mind, uh, the gain is they think power or dominance or moral superiority or something. But whenever somebody feels the need to, to remind you over and over, you are insignificant, they're attempting to build their own fragile ego and they're not doing a very good job of it. And so uh, when I say our narcissist is all about show, they're all about propping themselves up. And if you have to go under in order for them to do that, they're okay with that. Okay. Now let's dive in with some of the questions that have come through. One person asked the question in a relationship, what about the narcissist reasonably initiate an idea for something that needs to be done? Okay. 
And then shortly after being evasive as if they never suggested the plan in the first place. What's going on here? Okay, so th in this person's question, uh, apparently that narcissistic individual initially shows a willingness that says, you know, we, we need to take care of some things here and we need to handle things in this way and not that way. And I'll do this and you do that. This is the game plan. And so you're thinking, wow, this is really nice. And then you're into it and you make your plans accordingly. And with this question, it says, but then the narcissist who made the suggestion in the first place becomes evasive. And when you try to say, hey, come on, we, we've got a plan, then they act as if they never suggested the plan in the first place. That is so much gaslighting. And what it says is in the moment that the narcissist tries to appear uh, cooperative or harmonizing, it's all for show. That's where we're going today. It's all about you presuming in that moment that I'm the nicest person you ever met. Now, when, when it comes to actually living according to whatever it is they're saying, the narcissist apparently thinks, oh, you, you mean I'm supposed to live it out too? No, I don't do that. I just talk a good game. And so narcissists many times will give you the impression that they're helpful and they're kind and they're cooperative, uh, cooperative. In fact, I'll come up with a plan for it, but in the long run, no. And so one of the things that we, uh, one of the principles we'll have to stand on as we engage with narcissists is proof is in the pudding over time. Okay. Um, I'm not impressed when someone says, Oh, I really want to be helpful in the short run. I mean, yeah, it's nice to hear that, but I'm impressed when I see a person and I experience with that person over and over. Wow, you're a person of your word. You're someone when you say something, you really follow through with it. In other words, talk is cheap. And so when we're dealing with narcissists there, uh, and we, we go back to that very first question, uh, they want to let you know that you're insignificant. We want to remind ourselves that part of the definition of narcissism is they like to maintain their edge of superiority. Uh, so, and they do it at your expense. And if they have, have to lie to themselves along the way, they're quite willing to do that. You know, uh, look at me, I'm, I'm significant. I'm, I'm helpful. I'm co uh, cooperative. I, you know, I, I came up with a plan. So they'll tell themselves all of that. But then when it comes to actual living it out, it's like, no, no, I don't do that. Now, the next question, do narcissists know what they're doing? So one of the things that we're suggesting here is that narcissists uh, are superficial in the way that they engage with you. They can sometimes talk a good game. They may actually give you compliments here and there, although some of them are a little reluctant to do that. So do narcissists know what they're doing? The, the answer is yes and no. And when I say yes, I don't mean it in a uplifting, positive kind of way. In their mind, it's like what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get supply. Now, they don't quite say it that way, but what they're doing is they're thinking to themselves, if I can come across as pleasant or friendly if I can show myself to be capable and smart and competent, then you and I are going to get along just fine. But then when, when you say, well, what I think you're doing is I think you're slinging a lot of baloney at me, then that part they'll, they'll say, no, no. And, and they honestly believe that. No, I'm not doing that. And when you say, well, you told me yesterday you were going to do this and today it's a different story. Narcissists become so committed to their own dishonesty. And I know that seems like a very foreign concept to you, um, but narcissists become so committed to their dishonesty that when you say, let's be honest with each other, they'll say, I am, I'm being honest. And, and they, they cannot uh, uh, accept the fact or acknowledge the fact that they are deep into rationalization and, you know, you know, half truths and things like that. So the narcissists know what they're doing. They know they're trying to get something out of you. They do not acknowledge to you and frankly to themselves, because they lie to themselves a lot, uh, that they're creating havoc. They have no empathy and part of an understanding 
and an honest exchange between yourself and someone else uh, ultimately does come down to empathy. In other words, there's me and my perceptions, but there's you and your perceptions too. And so healthy people uh, factor that in, but narcissists don't have good connections because they don't have empathy. And which means that when they do nice things with you, it's not in a uh, connected kind of way. It's all for the short term show, the short term gain that's there. And, you know, I, I know that when I answer questions like this, it kind of sounds jaded or negative. And sometimes we think, you know, is are they this bad? And, and my response is, well, I don't want it to be the case. But the bottom line is narcissism is a known pattern. There's a spectrum. Some people have it in a very powerful way. Some people, it's there a lot. Some people, it shows up here and there. But the bottom line is the more you're on there, the further down that spectrum of narcissism you are, uh, then one of the primary ingredients that comes along with it is phoniness. They're just simply in it for the veneer, for the facade, behind the scenes. There's an entirely different mindset. There's an entirely different agenda. Okay, so another question this person asks, does closure ever matter to a narcissist? Like any last statements or reasons, or do you just go straight to block? Okay, so this person apparently is at a place where they're saying, I'm, I've had it with this narcissist. It's not going well. It hasn't gone well for some time. I need some closure. And then the question is, does closure matter to the narcissist? Okay. Um, winning matters to a narcissist. And so one of the, it, we'll say closure matters to a narcissist in the sense that they get to win and they didn't get to declare themselves the winner. So let's suppose that you're having a situation where it's obvious that the relationship is unraveling and you're trying to debrief and talk about why it got, uh, got there. Uh, the narcissist wants to make sure that you know that you're the problem. Now to them, that's closure. And so you're you, the, the person who's asking the, uh, the question is closure matter. You're asking, you're using the word closure in a different way than the narcissist would look at it. Uh, in a healthy sense, when we have relationships and we're moving on to something else, closure implies that we each have a, a fair understanding of one another. We understand who we are and what we're trying to do and what the better alternatives are and what's out there and, and how, you know, other scenarios may need to, uh, to happen. That's closure. In other words, there's objectivity in the midst of it all. Does that sound like anything you've had with a narcissist? They're not objective. They're very subjective. They're not interested in knowing you and moving forward with a good appreciation for what you've experienced. None of it. They don't look at life. They don't look at experiences with you as part of the learning trajectory. They think in terms of win versus lose. And so a narcissist likes closure only in the sense that you need to know how bad you are. Okay. I feel closure now. That's, so that's not the same thing. You have to learn to think like them. Uh, and then uh, you realize that, well, your cleaner alternatives just make that much more sense when you can see that. Now, Another question, and this one's a really interesting one because actually it seems like one question, but it's two questions in one. This person says, can narcissists change or at least control themselves, himself or herself? Two questions. You know, can a narcissist change? Can a narcissist control themselves? Okay, two very, very different things. Now, the general consensus with uh, with people like me who understand the, the nature of narcissism is that narcissists have a low probability to change every now and then. I know some of you are pretty jaded and I understand why, but every now and then somebody that's had a pretty strong narcissistic bent uh, will say, you know what? I see the light and, and, and it's true. And they, they blew it. They understand it. They claim it. They take ownership of it and they go into a deep effort to make some really healthy adjustments and amendments. But that's very much the exception. It's not the rule at all. And, and I, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's, it's low. But, but they can change. 
Uh, they just tend not to. But this question is, can a narcissist change or at least control themselves? Okay, now to the control themselves, that's a different story because it's all about the show. So let's suppose that you have a narcissistic individual and behind the scenes, they rage easily and they are uh, just rude and, uh, and uh, very contentious in the way that they engage. But then it's like, oop, here comes this person that I want to impress. They can be nice. They can be friendly. They can be, you know, tell funny stories and they can seem to have an interest. Yeah, they can control themselves because it's all about propping up the image. Keep in mind that one of the defining features of narcissism is the need to prop up a false self. So yeah, for a while they can control themselves. Do they change? It's a th different story. The controlling of oneself is, is merely image management and that alone. Uh, whereas change is, is not at all about just image management. Change is about hard, hard self-examination and taking responsibility and taking ownership and making amends and things of that nature. And uh, you tend not to see that at all inside uh, the narcissistic pattern. But by the way, as, as an aside, one of the things that I appreciate about the 12 step movement that's been so popular for quite a number of decades is uh, the need for them to acknowledge, you know, my life is a train wreck and I have not done it well at all. And so they start with the uh, presumption, uh, I'm not able to manage myself. Therefore, I need a higher power and I need to be honest with myself. I need to go and make amends. And, uh, and so the, it, it, it walks them through uh, what would be a, a pattern of humility and a pattern of accountability. And I appreciate that. Uh, narcissists, and, and from time to time, you get people that just successfully work the steps. Uh, so that's what I mean when I say sometimes people can change. Um, but narcissists is like, nah, it's, it's just more about, you know, image control. Okay. Um, another question, speaking about image, do narcissists feel badly about lying? Okay, what do you think? And the answer is, in their minds, I'm not lying. I just you just can't handle the truth. And so, no. Um, another ingredient that goes along with narcissism is an underdeveloped conscience. Uh, in fact, I have a, a video that I did uh, probably within the last year or so about narcissists and their underdeveloped conscience, and. They, they have an intellectual, perhaps, sense of right versus wrong. In other words, they know it's, 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 it's not nice to tell a lie. It's not nice to steal. And uh, you're supposed to be you know, kind of little old ladies crossing the street. Okay, they, they can understand a few things like that about right and wrong. But uh, when it comes to having a really strong moral compass, it's like, no, they, they don't go quite that deep. They, they may understand what some of the rules or what some of the regulations might be, but that's not the same as having that inner sense of ethics and that moral compass. And so when they get to a point where it's like telling the truth is not going to suit my purpose right here in the moment. And so I'll leave out facts or I'll tell you half the story, which makes it seem better than what it is, or I can just completely lie altogether. I can be evasive. I can be bad. There's all sorts of ways they can, uh, they can be dishonest. And it's like, it just comes with a package uh, because propping up their image of who they want you to think they are is so, so important. You know, you'd like to think at some level, and a narcissist in their quiet moments, they're sitting at home, it's dark, it's at the end of the day, and they're just sitting there kind of reflecting on the day. You'd like to think they would think to themselves, I didn't handle things well today, or this didn't go well, or uh, there's certain things that I just need to come to terms with. And, and, and they can take that time for self-reflection, but instead, narcissist is like, no, I don't do that. Uh, and if I do reflect about some things that didn't happen well today, who out there can I blame? And so do they feel badly about lying? Do they feel badly about how they posture with people? Uh, for the vast majority of the time, not really. Okay. Um, 
Now, another question, and this is one of those questions that actually is a person more or less making a statement or an observation of truth, but putting it in the really kind of category, okay? So this person says, is it possible for a narcissist to have extremely low self-esteem? Now, by virtue of the fact that you're asking that question, I'm making the assumption that you're watching a certain someone and you're thinking, they seem to have low self-esteem which is why you're asking the question. Part of the posing of a narcissist, trying to uh, just, it's all about the show, is they want to come across as definitive. They want to come across as somebody who knows things and they're uh, confident, which is why they gravitate towards uh, what I call imperative thinking. You know, they declare what has to be. This is the way things have to be. And this, this is how things are supposed to line up. They, they are, they're drawn toward authoritarian themes. They want to be in control because they've convinced themselves that they should be in control. They, uh, they uh, convince themselves that entitlement is, is reasonable for them because uh, they think, well, I'm, I'm someone special. And so they've told themselves from the inside out, I deserve better treatment than the average person out there. But then when you break that down, you realize virtually any time a narcissist goes into this, what does it mean when you feel that it's okay? Um, let's see. It says you're okay. Now, I, I, I had something there that said my connection's not good. W what does it mean when a person feels that it's okay to build up their self-esteem at your expense? That's not a confident person. A confident person is someone that says, well, I know that I have some positives in me and I know you have some in you. Let's build each other up and let's let's have a sense of interconnection. Let's have a sense that says that we're going to be positive with each other in the way that we engage with each uh, with one another. We don't feel the need to elevate oneself by diminishing another. Uh, so what narcissists uh, will portray as confidence is actually a cover for their own hidden insecurities. Uh, narcissists are pathologically insecure. Okay. And so it's so important for you to recognize that they'll tell you how awful you are, but it's all part of their projection. Uh, they see in you issues they don't want to come to terms with in themselves. That's the projection. Think of a projector, the, the, uh, the pictures over here, but they see the, uh, the image over there. That's projection. Okay. All right. Um, this next one, and I suspect that you've had, uh, many of you have had uh, some episodes with something like this. This person says, I think my narcissist knows that I'm leaving. And, and uh, he just said to me at lunch, I love you. And uh, I love coming home to you. And he hasn't said that in a long time. Is he playing me? Now, and again, this is one of those where we don't want to sound really jaded, but yes, he's playing you. Um, you know, here, uh, clearly something has been going on between yourself and this individual. And you're thinking, you know, this isn't working. I need to get away. And, and, and it begins to show in your demeanor and in the way that you manage your schedule and how you talk and all the rest. And so the narcissist can pick up on, it's like, Ugh. seems like the, we're getting close to the end and they're thinking I'm getting close to losing my supply here. And so they may try to kick it in gear for a while and say, you know, did I ever tell you how nice you are or how helpful you are? How, let's remember all those nice things that we've done together. And so they want to keep you around. We have a term for that. It's called breadcrumbing. Uh, they'll toss you little morsels of pleasantness just to keep you coming back. It's just kind of like the bird that comes back to the, the to the one that drops the breadcrumbs. But it's just that. It's a form of gaslighting. What you want to do when you're in a situation where you're thinking, I need to get away. And then if that narcissist comes along with some sweet nothings that they say to you, uh, put that in the context of the big picture. How consistent are these comments that I'm hearing just in this brief window of time? How consistent are they relative to the whole body of evidence and make your decision on the body of evidence that's there as opposed to short term, 
you know, they go back into the love bombing and all of that. Frankly, uh, when people do that, that often uh, means that they're trying to uh, pull you into the cycle of abuse. You may have seen those charts where you have the pleasantness and the, and the decency and all like that. And then you begin to have some of the breakdown and the abuse happens and then they express remorse. And so they go back to the pleasantness and it's one big, huge circle. And uh, you that typically that's what is happening with something like this. And so make your decision based on the large body of evidence as opposed to the short term you know, pleasantry that probably is not going to go very far. Okay. Um, another question we have here, this person asks, is a narcissist so fear-based that they can never go be below the surface with anything in life? Do they lose curiosity about life? Now, this is another one of those questions where in asking the question, you're kind of making a statement. It's like, Seems to be the case that as far as I see it, they seem so fear-based that they're not curious about self-exploration and they don't want to talk about deeper, meaningful things. And we go back to our theme of today's uh, program. It's all about the show. Yes, they're fear-based, which is why it's so important for them to only portray themselves in a positive light. They do not want to go along and, and say, you know, I have some things that I need to examine and uh, I'm more than willing to do that. Somehow, whenever there's a problem, it's just not their fault. And when you ask, well, why is it so threatening for you to just say, yeah, I blew it. Or if I see some things in you that I don't like, it also reveals some things in me that I don't like about myself. Why is that so threatening? And the answer is, no, oh, no, they're, they're way too entitled. Uh, they're way too invested in maintaining the superior position. It's like, I'm more than happy to point out to you, your humanity. We're not about to go into mine. Vulnerability scares the living daylights. And so uh, part of that is uh, when this person asks, do they lose curiosity about life? It's like, well, if we go into the curious dimension, which means let's look at some things that may not um, um, be evident right now. We may find some insights and awarenesses that we haven't examined before. It's like, no, the narcissist is like, no, I, I have my tight grooves that I'm in and I want you to be in. And so if we go into that questioning or that exploratory mode, that may not work out real well with me. Why don't we just go ahead and stick it inside my grooves and that's it. It's all about the show. Okay. Uh, Self-examination is not something they want to do at all. Okay. Um, okay. Now, uh, th this next one is, is a variation of a question that I get fairly often. Okay. Uh, this person asks, uh, what are some of the relationship dynamics between two narcissists? So one of the common questions I get is, can narcissists engage with each other? You know, what happens? And the answer is, yeah, they'll, they'll do it for a while. If they each think that they're going to get something off the other one, it's very transactional. Um, and this person says, um, uh, you know, what are some of the relationship dynamics between two narcissists? In this case, uh, it's a mother and daughter uh, example, or perhaps two friends is the way she puts it. Do they really like and respect each other, or is it all just show? Sometimes narcissists can have this mutual pact, and it's uh, on a subconscious or an unspoken level, where one narcissist may just more or less know, hey, look, I like blowing smoke up other people's rear end. And the other person is thinking, so do I. And one person, uh, the first narcissist says, well, I like being, I like being in the control authoritarian position. And the other part, uh, narcissist says, me too. And so for a while they can join forces. It's like, well, let's just team up together. There's more strength in numbers, you know? And so for a while, narcissists can have these, and, and it's all so much on a subconscious level, that they can have this pact that says, uh, we will uh, you know, uh, have each other's back as we each try to bum fuzzle people there in front of us. And we each try to be the one who's the ultimate, um, you know, best person in the room. And so sometimes you can have teams of narcissists. We call it collective narcissism. 
Now, over time, if one of them begins to have some misgivings about the other and they say, well, why don't we talk about it? And then that's when it cracks because they can't go into that curious mind mindset that we talked about just a moment ago. But there are plenty of narcissists who will say, well, why don't we just have this quiet understanding that you prop up my phoniness, I'll prop up your phoniness. Neither one of us will call the other out when it comes time to uh, to being honest about the way that we treat people poorly. We'll just kind of wink and uh, and have each other's back. And if you are part of the outsider or an outsider looking in, you're going to be vilified. This person mentioned mother daughter. For example, inside families, you can have a mother daughter arrangement where in this case, let's say the daughter is the golden child and uh, the mother and the daughter are both very selfish, but there's this golden child kind of a thing. And then uh, they can uh, put down or vilify the scapegoat or whoever the other people are in the family, because the two of us, we've got this understanding, or you can do it inside a business. You know, you have one person that's the, the pet and the teacher's favorite, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, you can, you can have teams of narcissism who quietly agree. We'll prop each other's back, uh, prop each other up until, you know, one of them calls out the other and then uh, you're an idiot and I never did like you, that kind of stuff. Um, th this next one is, is one of the, the difficult ones. Uh, and it's about, um, we talked last week a little bit about parental alienation, or in this case, parent, parent grandparent and, uh, alienation. And then this person brings in the question about counseling. Uh, this person says, my daughter is married to a narcissist and our relationship with him has become so toxic that we now have no contact with him, uh, which means then that our daughter and our grandkids uh, don't have contact with us. She says we should get a third party, a counselor, to work things out between us should we do this. And this is a very common thing that I see. Let's say that in this case, she has a daughter, the daughter gets married, the, the husband is very difficult, you have kids that are involved, and, and so the kids get wrapped up in all of the, the, the lead narcissist kind of an issue. You, the parent, and now the grandparent get pushed out. And you're over there thinking, well, I'd like to have a relationship with my grandkids, you know, and these people are the gatekeepers. So what do I do? And then the daughter says, well, I guess the only way we're going to do it because we can't talk among ourselves is maybe we need to get a third party. Maybe you need to go to a counselor. And if I'm the grandparent, it's kind of like, well, what do you got to lose? And so I'd be open to the possibility of seeing a therapist. Uh, and, and when I had my practice, I had multiple cases of a similar nature where you had various family members trying to figure out what to do in particular relative to the kids. Uh, and so it could be that something could come about it. Now, I'm going to go back to what I mentioned that my video tomorrow is about. The number one thing that will get you in trouble with a narcissist is you tell them the truth about themselves because then they'll come back at you with a vengeance. The problem that you have when you sit down with a narcissist and then uh, you, you have a therapist uh, and you're, you're, as the grandparent, saying, well, there's a problem here and we need to discuss it. Keep in mind, with the narcissist, it's all about the show. And rather than saying, you know, the narcissist, I, I really have been unfair and the grandparents really can have a very significant role in my kid's life. They tend not to do that. And so if you as the grandparent go in there and say, well, here's A, B, and C that's wrong, and there's this, that, and the other that's in that person's character that I don't, I just don't like, then the narcissist, knowing that they're in the power position, will say, okay, I'm shutting it down, or they'll just come at you. So you have to take it in kind of a, um, a less than ideal kind of way, and you have to just more or less ask the question, help me understand what you want me to know about you. Help me understand how we can coordinate and, and uh, how I can engage best in such a way where this is going to be something that uh, allows me to remain in my role as the grandparent. <clears throat> and you can't get too far in the prosecuting role uh, towards the narcissist because they will come at you because it's all about the show. So that's a very delicate one. And the, uh, this, the discussion is one that's not going to be very deep 
Uh, but it, you, you have to kind of keep it on a functional level as opposed to an insight oriented level. And there are times as a therapist that I would have to know which, which are we dealing with. And when you've got a narcissist in the room, you tend not to go to the insight level. You have to stay at a functional level. So the, another question uh, that a person sen uh, sends in, this person says, will a narcissist be able to hide it from a doctor? And the answer is, oh, yeah. That's what, that's, that's what they're doing when they walk in the door and shake hands and say, hey, it's so nice to meet you. Uh, heck, yeah, they'll try to hide it from the doctor. And some uh, narcissists are so good at being able to keep up the veneer that they can really make themselves come across well, or we can turn it around. Unfortunately, some therapists, not all, but some therapists don't really know the dynamics fully enough to know what they're dealing with, and they are susceptible to being tricked. Um, but yeah, it's they, they bring that false self no matter where they are, and they'll bring the false self into the counseling office. So, um, and therapists are human beings, and sometimes they can be they can be tricked. Okay. Another question. Um, this person asked, why are people authoritarian? Why do they have such a strong need to be in control? I don't get it. What, and the problem there is you're thinking like a healthy person. <laughs> I say that in jest, but not really. Um, narcissists are so enamored with themselves. Their, their beginning point is there's me in the room that's enough. They don't go any further. And so then when you show up, it's like, well, then you need to be a version of what I say you need to be. And in their selfishness and in their entitled uh, uh, way of thinking, they've convinced themselves that people just need to go along with me. And so that lends itself to a very strong authoritarian approach toward life. And a narcissist actually likes other authoritarian people as long as they're off the, the same chart. And, and so it's the, the, uh, the reason that narcissists are drawn toward authoritarian themes is because it allows them to set the, uh, the stage as to who's the most important person. And it's funny how it's always themselves. And so authoritarianism is a dead giveaway for narcissism, but they're just uh, going to say things like I'm trying to be helpful or you just don't know what I know. You need me to keep you in line. And uh, the, the more authoritarian an individual is, then the more it implies that there's very, very poor insight. And again, what you see on the outside is, uh, is a deep and strong cover. They're, they're hiding behind a thick wall of defense and you will not get to know the uh, the troubled aspects of what they're dealing with because they won't even allow themselves to think and know and delve into what all that means. Okay, uh, they have to be authoritarian over you to keep them from having to examine themselves. And then let's uh, let's let's end with this question. This person says, "If this narcissist doesn't love me, why does he care that I left?" Which is a great question. You're using pure logic. Um, Narcissist, when you decide I'm, I'm uh, heading for the exit, narcissist, again, it's all about the show. It's like, well, that can make me look bad. If, if you leave, people might think that there's something wrong with me. Ah, I know. Let's run a smear campaign. And so they, uh, they tell you how this is wrong and you're inappropriate. They let other individuals know that they're the nicest person you ever met. This person who's uh, heading for the exit is the one who's the bad one. And again, it's part of them trying to uh, to keep up the false self. And w when we look at all these different questions that I'm responding to here today, it's like there's no end to the scenarios where narcissists feel the need to prop up their own deeply fragile and, and fractured ego and you're over there thinking, what's real? And the more you see that they're into their high control, they have low empathy, they have a need to be superior, they have attitudes of entitlement, they're, they play games with the truth constantly, all of that's part of the narcissism spectrum. Uh, then one of the, the beginning points you can have as you're trying to interpret them is to say, what you see on the surface 
is almost never what's really going on behind the scenes. And you have to take that into account. Now, in the meantime, I'm hoping that those of us on Team Healthy can say, well, I want to be honest. And it's kind of strange to say part of my healthiness is to be able to acknowledge the moments when I'm not as healthy as I need to be. Or part of my confidence is to acknowledge that I'm not always confident. Part of my strength is in recognizing that I carry weaknesses and I love me and I accept me as I am because I'm a work in progress. I'm always going to be open to input. That's what healthiness is. And that's what a, uh, a person that's, uh, that's being honest with themselves and you, uh, that's what they'll do. Narcissists, like I say, from the, uh, all the way through here today, it's all about the show, period, end of discussion. So the more you're able to distinguish where they are with where you want to be, then it, at the very least, you're not going to get caught in their snares. So we're going to close for today, guys. Uh, there are more questions that I'm leaving on the table. Uh, those of you who uh, have been with me for a while, you know, just go ahead and put your comments or your questions in the comment section below, and I'll pick up on them next week. We'll answer more. And uh, we're going to keep doing this until we get all the questions answered, which means I think we're going to be doing it for a while, right? I really appreciate how you all uh, speak words of encouragement to each other. Boy, do we need that. I appreciate you all letting it be known that you have a desire to grow. You're not alone. Uh, if you're hurting, you're not alone. We're all in this together. That's why we call it team health. It's a virtual thing, uh, but it's real, even in its, uh, in its format. Okay. I care about you and I, I'm, I'm honored that you allow me to be on your journey and I will see you same time next week. Bye.